Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the most must-see podcast to someone anywhere around the world. I'm Freddie Cord, back again here on Mark's side of the ring. It's been a couple of weeks. Took a little bit of a Thanksgiving break. Hope everybody had a, a nice Thanksgiving, ate a lot, and uh, enjoyed some wrestling these last couple of weeks that we haven't spoke. And indeed, as is always the case, a lot has been going on in the world of professional wrestling. Um, and we're just going to go right into it to start things off. The news that broke today, today is Thursday, December 9th. If you're watching this, uh, it has already happened. But the big news that Jeff Hardy has been released from WWE. Um, what a sad, sad situation. Um, you know, on a live event last weekend, he all of a sudden left the ring and went through the crowd. Nobody really knew what happened. It was a very strange thing. The video had surfaced online a bit, very weird. And nobody really knew what happened. Um, and then the next thing you know, he got sent home uh, from the tour. And then um, today the news breaks that he got released. So the story making the rounds is that WWE offered him help, you know, send him to rehab and he denied it. And I guess once he denied it, they're like, well, you don't want our help. We have no choice but to get rid of you. And that's what happened. And it's unfortunate, um, you know, whether Jeff did need this help. Obviously, WWE thought enough that he did. Um, but Jeff didn't think he did. Now, Jeff has obviously had his issues before um, multiple times, but he seems to have been in a good place. So this is kind of surprising. Uh, the timing of it. He's really been on a roll in his career, uh, you know, getting drafted to SmackDown. The rumors had been swirling that he was going to be in line for a uh, feud with Roman Reigns, which even though, you know, we probably knew the outcome of what was going to happen, but it's still a big, that's a big position to be in. That's the biggest position to be in uh, is opposing Roman Reigns. So big spot for him was probably going to happen down the line. Um, so it's, it, it's terrible timing for him. Um, I, I, but the bottom line is, you know, the wrestling part is not important. What's important is that he gets better uh, if he needs to get better, which I would assume maybe he does. Um, but get the help that he does need. And uh, I just hope he's all right. And that's it. But uh, best wishes out to Jeff Hardy. I know he'll he'll land on his feet somewhere. And um, whether down the road, come back to WWE or he does go to AEW, um, you know, tags with his brother matt that's always an option too i'd rather obviously see him in wwe but he's going to need to straighten some things out before that could could uh be happening but anyway best of luck to jeff hardy hope uh hope he you know is doing all right but uh on to the wrestling side of things last night aew dynamite in long island pretty pretty decent show uh the mjf and cm punk stuff uh you know, to me, stood out as as the best stuff of the night. I uh, I loved the punk heel. I don't want to say a heel turn because it was only for a one night thing, but it just showed you how good he is in that role. Uh, but coming out to MJF's music is the first thing on the show, and the crowd just going nuts. And then he comes out, and now they're pissed, and you've instantly set up heat. You know, uh, which was smart because the odds were that Punk would get. I don't want to say booed, but certainly not cheered in Long Island compared to MJF because MJF's so over, especially in his hometown. Um, so that, that was clever. Um, the only downfall of it was that then when MJF did come out, you know, did you not have as good of a reaction? You could argue because they already heard that music once. Um, that's been talked about many times over the, you know, when you hear the, you know, the guy's music, the first time is when you get the loudest reaction, right? So being that the first time that it hit was not him, did that affect it? I mean, it were, you know, minor things, but I thought overall it was a great, great call. And I enjoyed it. I thought Punk probably had the best promo since he's been back. Um, and and then MJF coming out, winning the diamond, dynamite diamond battle royal, whatever, whatever they call it, winning that. And uh, well, him and... Uh, Dante Martin winning it, uh, and they'll face off next week. Winner is coming, but um, you know, Punk then coming out during during that, and just it was a it was a whole great thing. And and I don't know where they're going to fight. I didn't know if they were going to 
you know, do it right away. Winter is coming, but obviously they're not. I think that's a smart move. If they could hold it off, hold it off to Revolution. I don't know if they can. That's a long time. I mean, you know, three months. Um, I don't know what other specials they're going to have. I know they're going to have a battle for the belts special in January. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if they're going to do any other big like theme shows like they are next week, like Winter is Coming. But um, I'm ready for CM Punk and uh, MJF, no doubt about it. It's going to be good. But uh yeah, pretty solid show. Uh, Cody Rhodes is going to challenge Sammy Guevara, according to him, uh, for the TNT title, I believe, n- next week. And uh, Winter is Coming. And will Winter is Coming, will anybody else be coming? That's a big question that we may get, you know, get some answers to next Wednesday. You know, with the talk of Johnny Gargano and Kyle O'Reilly's contracts expiring, I believe tomorrow the 10th is when they actually legitimately expire. But we did we see their last showing on NXT on Tuesday night? Are they leaving NXT or are they leaving WWE? You see, there's a difference. You know, are they just leaving NXT and going on to the main roster, which is also a big deal? You know, that they could have made a big deal out of them leaving. Um, some people are under the impression that Kyle O'Reilly is out, but not necessarily Johnny Gargano. Uh, whereas the other day, it seemed clearly that. Johnny Gargano was out, so we'll see. We'll see what happens there, but um, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to see if Kyle O'Reilly shows up, and you could do the undisputed error, you know, because you got obviously Adam Cole and you got Bobby Fish. If you get Adam um, Kyle O'Reilly, I mean, besides Roderick Strong, you know, you, you have the, the three original anyway. Basically, have the undisputed era is kind of cool. Um, obviously, they can't call them that, but they can allude to it and 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 work together. So, could be fun. And Johnny Gargano going to AEW, I could see that happening too. I don't want either guy to go. You know, I want them to stay in WWE, not necessarily stay in NXT. Uh, although maybe <laughs> maybe that's the best thing because you know we NXT and uh, call ups haven't been too. Uh, haven't been too good lately. Let's put it like that. But uh, you know, eventually, I guess you gotta you gotta go up, right? That's the whole point of the whole system. So we'll see what happens. But I um, I thought they did a really good job with the Johnny Gargano uh, send off on Tuesday, but then made a story out of it. So that's what makes me also question: like, did they just use his goodbye to get this kid over, Grayson Waller? Or is this going to set something up down the road? It could it could be either way. I mean, there, there could really be nothing to look into except using Johnny Gargano's legitimate exit to get somebody over on the way out. And Johnny Gargano's business, he he you know he understands you know you go out on your back, right? And that's technically what he did. He didn't necessarily lose a match, but he put somebody over on his way out, which is really cool, I think. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But and so did Kyle Riley. Kyle Riley put Von Wagner out uh, over on the way out. So both Von Wagner and Grayson Waller got um, you know big spotlights on them because of of Gargano and Kyle uh, respectively. So big things happen in there. We'll see what happens. NXT certainly not the NXT that we knew, but not necessarily bad either. Um, I really enjoyed NXT War Games. I thought all the matches were really good. I thought the two War Games matches were, were excellent. Um, I, I don't really know if I thought the men's was better than women's or, or the women's was better than the men's. I thought they were both just really good. I, I didn't I didn't get a sense of like one felt better than the other, although I will say I, I enjoyed the story better in the men's one. I liked the idea of NXT Black and Gold versus NXT 2.0. Um, so I, I, I did like that better and in by proxy that kind of, I guess made the match a little bit better because I was more invested in that story. Um, I was, I mean, I wanted black and gold obviously to win, but I was very happy for Braun breaker though. That was a right call. I mean, having him win was the right call. I'm a big fan of his. He's one guy that when he gets called up, I don't see them messing that up. Never say never. Obviously they messed up carrying cross, which is still mind boggling, but I don't think I don't think Braun Breaker is going to get uh, messed up on the main roster. So 
good call on Braun Breaker winning that. I thought that was really cool. Good match. And uh, big things coming for him, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, NXT War Games, we saw Cameron Grimes um, beat uh, Duke Hudson. Duke Hudson got his hair cut. And then on Tuesday, we saw him do the old Kurt Angle gimmick with the wig, with the uh, the uh, amateur wrestling, you know, headgear cover up, holding it up. And, you know, the reveal happens sooner or later. It'll be it'll be fun. But um, I like how they did that call back. You know, you forget it, 19 years ago that, that, that that happened over 19 years ago that that happened. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but it was. So it, that's a long time ago that that was an angle. You know, no pun intended. Um, big fan of Cameron Grimes. Big fan of his. I, 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 he, he's he's money. No, again, no pun intended. I know his, his theme song, but uh, he's great. He's great. I see big things for him for sure. I think he still needs time, though, in NXT. I think he's got a lot more he could still do, though, in NXT. But definitely going to be a big, big guy coming up, uh, coming up the road. So, uh, yeah, they had a great match. Like I said, they, the... Uh, Women's War Games, um, Cora Jade getting the win. That was, just, I, I'll be honest, I was surprised. I, I didn't expect her to win. I thought if Mandy's uh, team, the Toxic Attraction team, uh, doesn't win, then I figured, well, Raquel Gonzalez will probably get the win. But no, Cora Jade did big, big spotlight for her. So I was happy for her that she got it. She's really good. Um, enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, just, you know, there was a couple other matches, uh, but. You know, solid card, great show, but uh, it was nice to see that NXT continues to put on these specials, even though it technically wasn't a takeover, but uh, still puts on a, a really good show. So enjoyed that. Uh, the Raw Monday was, was good. I was so invested in the Liv Morgan Becky Lynch match. It felt old school like that. I was like, OK, sitting down, ingesting this match, paying attention, no phone invested. You know what I'm saying? which I, it's very hard to do nowadays. People are so distracted. And I, I admit that too. I get distracted. But there's certain things that you're like, okay, no, we're watching this. And then, and then that's how I felt with that main event. I'm not mad that Liv didn't win. I know a lot of people were upset. Part of me didn't, most of me didn't think she would win, but then part of me thought she might. I was like, wow, she's so over. They may just do it. Um, and the way she reacted when she came out, I was like, does she know something we don't kind of thing? Um, but I think she was just playing up how important and how big this was to her, you know, uh, but great match. And then use of the ropes, you know, classic move, but it works. It works. You know, if it ain't fixed, don't break it. So, uh, and she didn't get a rope break. See, mm -hmm. uh, pun was intended on that one. So, you know, Becky Lynch, where does she go from here? I think Liv gets another match. Does it happen at day one? Does it happen on Raw Monday? You know, um, I, I think it's going to happen sooner or later. She deserves it. I don't know if Liv is going to win because I don't see Becky not being the champion going into WrestleMania. Now, could she lose it and then win it back? Sure. But do you really want your champion to drop the title before Mania if they're going to go into Mania as champion? I don't think so. But never say never. Right. But um, Liv isn't done yet for sure. But great match there. Uh, also enjoyed the Big E uh, Kevin Owens still cage match. Big E obviously winning. That was good. Uh, I'm looking forward to that triple threat match at day one. Day one's shaping up to be a really good card. Um, we got the triple threat with uh, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and Big E for the WWE Championship. Uh, and then Bobby Lashley got involved after. And uh, now, you know, it's question, you know, will it become a fatal four-way, which I'm not opposed to either. You know, I think, I mean, Lashley deserves his one-on-one -on -one match with Big E. He never got his rematch from losing it after Big E cashed in, and that was months ago now. So I definitely like to see business between the, the two of them for sure, which I thought they were going to go right into, but it, it didn't happen. And then with Survivor Series and the whole thing, uh, you know, Raw versus SmackDown, it kind of put it to the side, but could they pick it back up? Um, but I wouldn't be mad if he gets added to the match at all, but we'll see what happens with that. And then uh, the big match made for... Uh, for day one on Raw was uh, Edge versus The Miz, which they started the feud. Great promo. Uh, Coey's going on Raw. Uh, I like how they mentioned AEW and the, them mentioning Miz, but not mentioning AEW. That's the right way to do it. You you don't talk about the actual competition, but you reference it. You know, um, 
So I thought that was well done. I enjoyed that. Um, I think they're going to have a great match. I, I Somebody said on the bump that it, it, it or maybe it was Royal Talk, Matt Camp, I believe, said it wasn't the mat. It wasn't a match he knew he wanted to see, but it's a match now that he does. And and I, that's exactly how I feel. Miz versus Edge wasn't something that I was like, oh, I hope Miz and Edge ha- ha- happens. You know, like like Edge and AJ and Edge and Seth was and Edge, you know, Edge and Roman, the whole thing. But now I'm like, oh, Edge and Miz, that's going to be good. That's going to be really good. And it is going to be really good. They've never really fought. I mean, like 10 years ago, they had a, like a, a handful of matches on Raw and SmackDown, but nothing obviously big. Um, this is big. And they're making a big deal out of day one. From what I understand, this is a Nick Khan project, and uh, it's his 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 idea. So they're going all out with it, and um, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to be good, and I think it's going to become a staple. You know, the first of the year, uh, day one. The only thing is, it, it luckily fell on a Saturday this year. It'll fall on a Sunday next year. But when it starts going into the week, I don't know how you do that. But they could do it on a certain day, you know, or or around new year's i guess you know whatever um but yeah i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be good it's gonna be good edge edge and miz uh again not the match i knew i wanted but the match i do want uh also um day one huge match made uh roman versus brock now i again this is just a showing of how big and important this pay-per-view is uh roman versus brock is happening on there. I never expected that. I didn't think Brock would work day one, let alone him and uh, him and uh, Roman in a rematch from Crown Jewel. I mean, we know that probably the roads are going to lead to WrestleMania between them, their final match. Um, but and I figured they'd have another one. I thought maybe the Rumble, if anything. But apparently, you know, WWE felt and, and it's true that the, the match didn't the Rumble didn't need that match. Right, which is true because the Rumble doesn't. The Rumble match itself sells the Rumble. I mean, you want a nice title match, but it's not, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to say waste, but you don't want to use one of your big matches on a show that doesn't really need it, where it won't, it, it might get outshined, right? Roman, what what other show will Roman and Brock get outshined by than, than the Royal Rumble? Um, so I think this was a smart move. Put it on here. Um, sell this pay-per-view and then you also that still and it's like four weeks late earlier right so that's even more time between they when they finally do clash for the final time of mania right so that month difference you know that's an extra month of build-up you know that they would have as opposed to if it happened at the rumble so I'm not a, i'm not mad about it uh i would have loved to see roman and, and and brock being that i'm going to the rumble but i'm going to wrestlemania so i'm going to see roman and brock anyway so all gravy baby um but yeah, Brock Lesnar and Sami Zayn on SmackDown, just classic. I am surprised at how good Brock is in this role. I was like, how's he going to be without Heyman? Like, like on the mic, like there's a reason Heyman was there. But he's great. He's really great. I'm, I'm enjoying this run. I mean, the whole run has been great so far. I mean, between the different look. And him being a baby, I mean, he's been a baby face before, but, you know, really being a baby face and, and, uh, him, you know, cutting promos and just, it's, it's, it's great. I'm really, I'm impressed. I'm never unimpressed by him in, in the ring. That's never like where I'm like, oh, wow, I'm impressed by Brock. I'm always impressed by Brock in the ring, but on the mic, I, I can't say that. And I, I have to say, I've been very impressed. He's been really good in this role. So. Uh, he'll be on SmackDown Friday night, so I'm excited for that. Uh, it's cool that back two weeks in a row. Uh, but the stuff he did with Sammy was great. Uh, Tony Storm and Charlotte, I'm excited for their feud, but I don't think uh, pie facing each other is is the way to really get it going. But I digress. Uh, you know, certain things. Uh, get you know thrown your way no pun intended you got to do what you got to do i think that they're they didn't need to do that i get the humiliating stuff but i you know we'll see where it goes but i'm excited for them to have a match i'm assuming they're going to finally face off at day one 
Um, and we'll see. I mean, as far as WrestleMania is concerned, it's got to be Charlotte and, and beyond um, Charlotte and Sasha, I think, uh, which would be which would be really cool. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that that's the match. And just like on the uh, Raw side, I'm hoping it's Bianca and uh, Becky. You know, I really uh, I'm hoping that, you know, I could totally see Sasha winning the Royal Rumble. Um I think Brock and Sasha are the two that are winning the Rumbles this year. Um, neither, uh, well, Sasha's never won it, but Brock hasn't won it in, it'll be 19 years by this year's Rumble, which is crazy to think about that he won it 2003 is 19 years ago. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, there was a couple years I thought Brock was going to win the Rumble, but we'll talk about the Rumble at, at, at a later time, but just, you know, mapping things out a little bit where they're going with day one and, and onward through the rumble and mania. But yeah, I think, um, I think Tony storm and Charlotte will be good, uh, if it happens at day one, but, uh, we'll, we'll do a day one special and talk about it. But, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of things are going on, you know, as always in the wrestling world, you know, this time of year is usually kind of, kind of, and eh, whatever, like TLC is happening, but it's never usually like a huge, huge show. Uh, but being that day one is going to be so big, you know, it kind of there hasn't really been a lull in this December time period like there usually is. I mean, it'll really pick up going into the Rumble onward to WrestleMania, obviously. But um, it's exciting right now with everything going on with day one coming up and, and you know, Edge is back and, and Brock is back and. You know, um, Miz is back. He was out for a while doing Dancing with the Stars. So, you know, um, and then with all the, you know, the the draft things finally starting to settle in now. A um, lot of exciting things coming up. So we'll see uh, where it all goes with day one coming up in a few weeks. But i um, going to keep it short today. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh, I certainly enjoyed being back here talking to you all things professional wrestling i'll be back next week to talk all about everything else that's gone on in this week in the crazy world of wwe and aew um and i hope you'll join me for that again thank you everybody for for listening watching however you do it whether it's on youtube whether it's on apple podcast spotify however you get uh mark side of the ring off of the true exact radio uh handle Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I hope more and more of you continue to join us. And we will see you next week for Mark's Side of the Ring 